Welcome, everyone, to VRL's annual public meeting, our APM for the year ending December 31st, 2023. I'm Jamie Orchard, Senior Advisor, Corporate Communications at VRL, and it is a great pleasure for me to be with you today to look back at our fiscal year ending 2023, an exciting year for VRL, and we have so much to tell you about. Once again, this year, we're coming to you in an audio recording, which complies with VRL's universal accessibility policy, an important policy at VRL. And as part of our APM today, we'll be talking to several members of VRL's management, Françoise Bertrand, chairperson of the board of directors, Mario Pelloquin, president and CEO, and Carl Delisle, our chief financial officer. But this APM, folks, is for you, and we're here to answer your questions as well. So as we've done in years past, we're going to pick some of the top questions that have been sent in to us by email and answer them during this APM. Without further ado, I want to welcome uh, to the studio Françoise Bertrand, our chairperson of the Board of Directors. Françoise? Bonjour. Very pleased to be with you this morning. Very happy to have you here. It was a huge year, I said, at 2023 for Via Rail. Uh, we want to tell people about everything that happened. I'd like you to give us some of the highlights looking back at 2023. What do you remember most and what was most important <laughs> to you? So many things. Let's <laughs> start by saying it was the real end of the pandemic. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So for us at the board, and uh, we were all there uh, since uh, 2017 and 2019. So we lived it. Mm -hmm. And um, we were under a strategic plan, very ambitious, that was talking about modernization. But for us, it is like the delivery of that plan that we have experienced in uh, 2023. And um, it was a journey very exciting. Mm. I'd say that it's a um, change from modernization to transformation. Oh, good way to put it, yeah. Because during that time, we will go with really completing our project. Let's talk about the reservation system. Let's talk about the new fleet, which is a long process, very kind of observed in terms of delivery, budget, and uh, conformity. It had been very, very delicate process. We have succeeded, and it's getting delivered, and it's exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, they're beautiful. The uh, reservation system, we know that um, uh, new technology and new system that are changes in the way we use them and with... Uh, Technological innovation to yes, help our Passengers, right? Always a challenge, yeah. and we've seen it elsewhere that it not totally a failure, but certainly uh, problems. Not ours. Oh, yeah, our ears From went well, day right? one, it yeah. went very well. So, no, we're very, very proud. But a year where we're preparing the transformation comes with changes, mm -hmm. changes in the team of the board. Four people had left. We're in all counting the CEO. We're 13 people at the board level. Four had left for more than a year. So we were in search of four new members. Already two people have joined the board in May, and it's uh, Catherine Klopfer from Winnipeg and Philippe Dennis uh, from Ottawa that have joined. A third one will be coming in August, and the fourth one in the fall. So that was already interesting to have new eyes, new expertise around the table. Mm -hmm. But the most exciting moment or time, because it's a long process, the interviews, the identification of the right criteria was the choice of a CEO. And um, we were in luck, <laughs> in a sense <laughs> that at the selection committee to which I participated, there was an understanding from the members of uh, government that were helping that uh, VIA is not a convenience store. It's a very important organization with 3,500 people uh, where we carry the uh, passengers from ocean to ocean every day. Uh, we want to really surpass the 5 million passengers we had in 2019. So we needed someone that had a vision and uh, had expertise in train operation and could help us out. So we found 
Mario Péloquin, mm. who accepted gladly to uh, come and uh, act as a CEO. And uh, a large part of the year, because he arrived at the end of June, was, of course, to support him in his onboarding. Mm. So 2023, so many changes at the board, at the senior leadership level, with the, as you say, transformation. Would you say 2023, a turning point for Via Rail? Oh, definitely. I say in French, c'est le début d'un temps nouveau. Definitely. <laughs> Beginning of a new era, yeah. start of and, a new era. Um, there's something I forgot to mention is the... Uh, Uh, the great relationship we have with Transport Canada mm. and the cabinet. We had uh, Minister Al Gebra that had uh, kind of supported the uh, creation of HFR, but uh, the Minister Pablo Rodriguez is supporting us in our new vision, the Vision 2030, which is uh, definitely uh, how we can really proudly say that it's a year of transformation because Our ambitions are really common between management and board, led by Mario in uh, really designing where we're going with VIA in the future years. With that strategic plan. And I'm going to stop you there for this segment because that leads us really well into our next segment. Uh, we're going to welcome Mario Peloquin into the studio. And thank you for that, Madame Bertrand. Really My pleasure. Well, we're welcoming to studio with us now Mario Peloquin, President and CEO. Madame Bertrand was just talking about it, Mario. A big year for you, 2023, as you joined Via Rail. I'd like to start uh, by asking you to just look back at that and your arrival at Via Rail and what did you run into when you got here? Well, first of all, it was really an honor to be selected by the Government of Canada and the board to come and join Via as President and CEO. Um, Via Rail is almost 50 years old, right? So joining at this time, at a time of um, modernization and transformation is very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm really happy to be here. The mandate that we have, uh, that I inherited, is to deliver passenger rail services on behalf of the federal government. That's a, a great mandate, very interesting. And um, one of the first things that I did when I arrived is I traveled across the country to meet as many of our employees and visit as many sites as possible. So as a result of that, I've met about 2,000 of our employees, so the majority of our employees. That allowed me to have conversations with them and identify various things that could be worked on, improved on, and so on. I have to say, I was really impressed by the quality, the enthusiasm, and the professionalism of our employees from coast to coast to coast. It's fantastic. They're passionate about delivering train services, passenger train services for Canadians across the country. I put together a new high-performing executive team mm -hmm. shortly after I arrived. They are people with a lot of experience for various industries, and they are the right people to help us bring Via Rail to the next level. We want to become best-in-class passenger rail service in North America, maybe the world. I'm a little bit ambitious. <laughs> And uh, with this team, I'm very confident that we will uh, arrive at that point. Mm. Well, I'm telling you, uh, we talked a lot about the excitement of 2023, and I just I want to come back on it because both of you mentioned the modernization, the transformation of VRL. Can you touch on, Mario, a little bit what's changed concretely for our passengers? Um, quite a few things, actually, um, but I want to start by saying that All that work, the modernization that Francoise talked about a moment ago, and the transformation that is starting now for to bring us to Via 2.0 or the new Via Rail, mm -hmm. would not be possible without the dedication and the hard work of all of our employees from coast to coast. So that's the first thing. A few key points in, in 2023. First is the new fleet that we started receiving in the corridor. Uh, so for the Quebec City to Windsor corridor, we're receiving new trains uh, at the rate of one train a month right now, and we'll continue receiving those trains until the end of summer 2025. These trains are modern, fully accessible, some of the best accessibility train in the world, uh, and they are a lot more comfortable than the other trains that people are used to. By the way, the average fleet of our trains right now in Canada is 77 years old. The average age of our trains? Yes, 77. so you can imagine that uh, they've aged 
um, a little bit. Um, it's probably one of the oldest fleet uh, in passenger service, revenue service in the world. So we're replacing these trains in the corridor. We launched a new reservation system, as Francoise uh, said a few moments ago. The fact that it didn't make any noise, people don't haven't heard or don't know about it, is a testament to the quality of the launch of this new technology. It's very difficult to launch an IT system with no problems, so it worked. And it's designed to continuously improve as we see the needs of our clients uh, change for complete mobility, for example. So that was a great success in 2023. And uh, finally, we uh, prepared a document that we submitted to the federal government. I talked about the 77-year-old car that we have that travel from coast to coast to coast. Um, we uh, presented the federal government with a document that explained the imperative of replacing those uh, train cars now. So that was a lot of work and um, uh, we need to develop a, a full business case to explain the importance and we did that in 2023. I want to bring Madame Bertrand in just a minute, but I think all of that, what you're saying is Via is trying to control what it can control, right? Because we don't control everything. <laughs> Correct. We operate... <laughs> Very funny. Um, <laughs> we, we own 3% of the tracks on which we operate across the country. The, the other 97, we operate on what we call host railways. They're freight railroads mostly. So we don't control a lot of the aspects of that operation. Uh, the fact that we are operating safely, we arrive at our destination and that that's a promise that I've made. We'll get you there eventually. We're not always on time, but we offer the best services uh, regardless of uh, sometimes some delays on our trains. Yeah, and the great onboard staff, as you were saying earlier, thanks to them, really. Absolutely. That's the comment that I hear the most often from people is, where do you get these people? They're fantastic. Mm. Madame Bertrand, uh, Mario talked about the replacement of the long-distance fleet. We've looked back on 2023. I'd like to hear from you looking ahead and, and what's coming for Via Rail. Well, uh, before we leave the um, long-distance uh, fleet, I I'd like to thank the uh, government of uh, Canada that has seen the importance of that change. And our minister announced uh, in Moncton, and very proudly uh, after the budget uh, declaration uh, earlier in the year or so, uh, it's reality. Uh, we haven't received all the money yet, but it's going to come when we do the uh, process for, of course, finding the right supplier. But I think it's um, not only a trust in VIA, but it's a common vision of where VIA has to go. And I think that's really for us um, enchanting in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, I forgot to mention the great work the board has done over the years to go through the pandemic, uh, to kind of complete the process, to uh, find the right CEO at the right moment, supporting him and making sure that we develop together a vision that is forward looking. And that vision is really exciting. That's why we call it not modernization. That's not exciting enough. We need transformation. Mm. We need a via that is really with its time, the 21st century looking ahead. And that's what we've been able to uh, put together with the hard work of the management team of uh, Mario and the board. And thank you to all the efforts that were put in. Um, our strategic plan has really five pillars, the most important or certainly one very important one, which is the passengers. Mm -hmm. We've got to really take care of their satisfaction to be listening to their needs and what we can act upon to do it. What we cannot, well, we're pushing somehow for better uh, conditions, but we really have at heart the mission of VIA, which is serving uh, Canadians from ocean to ocean. The other element is certainly the safety. Mm -hmm. Safety is paramount. If we don't have safety, no need to have nice and uh, very luxury trains. It, it doesn't take you anywhere. Mm. Employees. Uh, employees, uh, Mario, always come back to that with due reason, but it's very important. 
who knows the expertise about trains. It's people within VIA, not the board. The board members bring other abilities, other competencies to complement uh, what is known. But why do we have a VIA that we're proud of? It's the employees. Mm -hmm. Of course, the sustainable growth is very important. Environment is for us, paramount, everything we can do. Uh, of course, we are still not electric, but everything we can do to diminish our uh, imprint is very important. Finally, and not least, is the financial responsibility and sustainability. We have revenues that are generated by our fees uh, to our passengers, but a lot of uh, our revenues are with subsidies from government. We've got to be very responsible towards those because it is the money of Canadians mm -hmm. that allows for that subsidy. So we've always been, but I think we have uh, more awareness and more sense of being really uh, efficient uh, and uh, really looking and turning every stone in order to make sure that everything contributes to that vision 2030. Well, uh, it's a perfect transition. I'm going to thank you, Madame Bertrand. And Mario, I'll ask you to stay with us. Uh, Madame Bertrand, really a pleasure to speak to you today. And we're going to welcome to the studio our Chief Financial Officer, Carl Delisle, who will talk to us uh, about just what you talked about, financial responsibility. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, for this segment, I'd like to welcome Cal Delisle, Via Rail's Chief Financial Officer. Thanks for joining us, Cal. It's a pleasure. We're going to talk about financial responsibility and all the numbers in just a minute. But Mary, I wanted to come back a little bit. Madame Bertrand was talking about our strategic plan, and I want to give you an opportunity to kind of jump in and tell us a little bit more about your vision of it. Oh, thank you, uh, Jamie. First of all, I want to say that uh, part of our strategic plan decisions were ensuring that we will have a lasting impact on via rail, on Canadians from coast to coast. And I'm not the type of person that waits, so I want to get acting on that very quickly. To do that, we needed a clear roadmap, which is called Via Action 2030. That's our strategic plan for the next five years. We want to do more, as we talked with Francoise, than modernizing Via Rail. We need to transform everything that we do to become best-in-class passenger railroad in the world. That's why we worked hard in 2023 on the development of the Action 2030. And um, to that point, I'd like to really thank the executive committee, the managers at Via Rail for all the work and dedication that they've put into developing this plan. But also, I want to thank the board uh, for supporting us, for guiding us and approving the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a big step to get that plan approved. And a big element of that plan, as Madame Bertrand was mentioning, was the fiscal responsibility of Via Rail. Carl Delisle, uh, that is definitely in your wheelhouse as a chief financial officer. Tell us about some of the, the big numbers in 2023 and what you took away. Yeah, with pleasure. But before to start, I would just like to reinforce the comments of Madame Bertrand. You know, as a new CFO, one of my priorities is the responsible use of public funds. So it's very important to focus on that, take the right decision, invest in the right thing. So... It's in our day-to-day, -day, I would say, in DNA, we want to continue to reinforce. So now I will jump in the numbers. And yes, in 2023, we had 4.1 million passenger because first we introduced frequencies between Toronto and Ottawa and London and Toronto. Yeah, that was the bounce back from the pandemic a little bit, right? You're right, yeah. you're right, totally right. And we deployed all of it with the capacity we had at that time. Mm. This is reflected by, you know, an, an increase in ridership of 25% if you compare with last year. Mm. I mean, 2022, yeah. just be sure it's clear. <laughs> yes. So, and this year we are on right track to surpass the ridership of 2019. It was our best record at that time. Hmm. And to that point, I really want to take a moment to thank our passengers from coast to coast for their trust and their loyalty. 
Mm, yeah, because passengers, that's what it's all about, right? Those numbers are people who love and appreciate our trains. And yeah, we can't thank them enough for that. Carl, what are some of the other highlight numbers that you wanted to mention to us? Yeah, so in 2023, we also recorded a total revenue of $432 million, representing an increase of 29% if you compare with 2022. And our operating expense of $944 million increased by 14.7% compared to 2022. And this increase is associated to the reintroduction of, as I mentioned, additional frequencies and also inflation. Mm, Yeah, everybody was hurt with that last year. So we have less revenue than expenses. So at that time, the government helped us, I would say, with funding. And in this year, the funding was uh, higher than $20 million for the year 2023 versus last year. All of those numbers, by the way, available in our annual report on our website, so if people want to take a closer look. Um, We talked a lot, Carl and Mario, about this modernization in 2023, this transformation, but none of that really happens without meticulous financial planning to get to that point. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that transformation and the planning that went into that? Yeah, maybe I can start with numbers and, and Mario will continue after that. So in 2023, Valley invests $391 million in its modernization, including the most investment related to the new corridor fleet for an amount of $206 million. The rest was uh, related to stations, rolling stock, rail infrastructure, uh, IT, and for sure the maintenance center. Mm, okay. So as we talked about a little bit earlier with Francoise, what the key projects that we delivered or started to deliver in 2023 were key for modernization of Via Rail, right? So very important. Uh, it gave us something to build on for the future Via Action 2030. That's really important to note. That's an investment by the federal government of over $3 billion in the last five years. That is significant. If you compare anywhere in the world, very significant. And it shows continued support by the federal government for continued passenger rail operations in Canada. Mm. And we talked about there's more to come, right, in this LDRR investment. Do you want to set the tone a little bit for the next 10 years, Mario, what we might see? Uh, Yes. So people are used to seeing Via Rail the way it has operated for the last 47 years. We're getting close to the 50th uh, anniversary of Via Rail. And now we're starting to modernize. So people are seeing new trains in the corridor right now. Uh, We have a new reservation system. And now we're launching this year, 2024, the request for proposal process for renewing the entire fleet, the rest of the fleet for the rest of Canada. Mm. So in the next few years, all Canadians from coast to coast to coast will benefit from modern, fully accessible trains. So we are going to be Via Rail 2.0, a new modern company. That request for qualifications, request for proposals, you're planning all of that, Carl, and your team that's coming soon. I know we can't give numbers, but can we say this is a pretty huge record investment for Via Rail? Yeah, for sure. And again, it's a good thing to talk about the investment. So is the most significant in series investment on the transformation of VRL and the future of uh, passenger rail in Canada. So it's uh, very good news for our VRL. And for our passengers and yeah. everybody who loves the train in this exactly. country. It's, it's worth an, um, repeating the message, right? The message is it's the most significant investment in VRL ever. Mm-hmm. Incredible. All right. So the future is bright, very exciting, as we mentioned, for the passengers and for VIA. Uh, But we have some questions from the public to talk to you about. Uh, That's what this annual public meeting is all about. And many of the questions are speaking to our services right now. And uh, one of the highlight questions is the demand, the request. Everybody wants more services. So what can we expect from the services that we're planning for as we get these new trains and through this transformation? So let me start by saying that we are monitoring the market daily, um, all the time, in real time, to see what services we can offer and what more services we can offer for more Canadians from coast to coast to coast. We're limited by the number of passenger rail cars that we have right now. So um, we do the best that we can. We don't have a large number of cars just sitting around waiting. We're using everything that we have to offer the most services to the most Canadians right now. With the renewal of the fleet in the corridor, eventually we'll release some of the older cars that are operating in the corridor, which may allow us to offer a little bit more services in certain regions where 
there's a, a need for more services. So we're monitoring in real time. We do everything that we can to offer as much as we can to as many people as we can across the country. All right. One of the specific questions, and I should have said it, is will we have more ocean service or more service in new parts of Canada? Same answer, right? A similar answer. I can build on that to say that we're also talking with various partners to see what more we can do. So we're not just constrained or we're not constraining ourselves by what we've done in the past, but we're trying to find creative new ways to try to do more. All right. And always, I would just add, always with responsible use of uh, public funds. Right, exactly. Always working with taxpayer dollars. Yeah. Right? It's very important uh, to note that our priority is to replace the existing fleet for the long distance and regional trains. So we're going to replace every seat with a new seat on a new modern car. Another question we get every year at this APM is about the gas pay service. It's a popular service in Quebec. A lot of people were very sad when it went away. So we have had that question again coming back. Will we resume full or partial service to the gas pay? The short answer is yes. Um, you know, I can, it's a beautiful region of Canada and Cal... Uh, originated there, so we, he can talk about how beautiful it is more yeah, than me. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, we don't like to stop services at any time for any Canadians, right? We had to stop that service because the track deteriorated to a level where we could not offer a service that we were proud of. When the trains operate at five miles an hour on a bridge, for example, that's not the kind of service we want to offer. And also, safety is paramount in everything that we do, as Francoise explained a little bit earlier. And when you're operating trains on tracks that have been let go, it's not the service we want to offer. The Quebec government invested heavily in 2023 in uh, renewing the track and the bridges in the region, and that work is ongoing right now. We're monitoring, and our commitment has always been when the track is in a, a good state of repair, safe to operate on, and we can offer a, a trip time that is reasonable, I'm not saying optimal, reasonable, we will restart the service. So we're watching very closely. We're talking to the partners in the province and the railway operators to make sure that everything is good. I know there's a sub question in there that I get asked all the time. Can we restart partial service? And the answer is no. We don't want to restart partial service because it creates logistical problems. We can't turn the train and so on and so on. So we will restart the service when we can restart all the way to gas pay. And we have the equipment, we have the crews trained, and we're ready to go in a safe way. All right. That's very clear. Thanks, Mario. Uh, more questions are available on our website. Just before we wrap up this segment, I want I want to give an opportunity to both of you to just talk about what you take away from 2023. What do you want our passengers and the people listening to us to take away? Well, 2023 was pivotal for Via Rail because we started modernizing the company and we've made great achievements in 23 that we can build on for the future. And that's why Via Action 2030 is so important because it builds on the recent past to make us the company that we want to be. We want to be the best in class operator not in Canada, because we're the, the only one, not only in North America, but a little bit of ambition in my part in the world, which is different than on-time performance, right? Best operator means that we will satisfy the customers all the time. So that's what we're building on from 2023. So it, it was a very important year for VRL. And Cal? And on my side, I would just like to add, uh, I think we are very ready to deliver the Strat Plan 2030. So... I think we have the team, I think we have uh, the support from the board, and the, as you mentioned, the future look uh, very bright. All right, exciting stuff ahead. Thank you both for being with us. I want to thank Madame Bertrand, who was with us earlier, and of course, all of you who listened to us uh, for this annual public meeting. Uh, for the answers, as I mentioned, to those most frequently asked questions, they are available on our annual public meeting webpage. And for your information, I mentioned it earlier, the 2023 annual report is also available on our website. Thank you so much to both of you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And join us again next year for our next annual public meeting when we look back at 2024. Take care, everyone.